Good morning and thanks for joining us for KBUI 2 News Midday. I'm Rick Douglas. Now to your top 11 stories at 11. Good news, all lanes of the inbound connector are back open after being shut down since about 8.45 this morning. State police say it was all due to a rollover crash involving a truck hauling a backhoe. It overturned at mile post one just before the Curtis off ramp. And the crash had all lanes blocked and traffic diverted to the right shoulder. Police say no one was injured and no one was sent to the hospital. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul today announced his candidacy for president in 2016. He will be the second candidate to throw a hat into the ring. Paul has a tall order ahead, hoping to attract younger and more diverse Republican voters, while appealing to the conservative base that he attracted attention to during a 13-hour filibuster back in 2013. Analysts say he'll have to distinguish himself from his libertarian dad in order to garner wider support from the voting public. Two men have been arrested in connection with a drive-by shooting last night on the Boise bench. Damon Wall and Zachary Tharp are both charged with three counts of unlawful discharge of a firearm into a dwelling, as well as several other crimes. Police say at around 6.30, the men fired several shots toward a neighborhood behind the Albertsons at Orchard and Overland. They found damage to three separate homes, including one bullet that entered the back of a residence, went all the way through the residence, exited the front, and into a second residence. So considering the damage done uh, from this vehicle, firing into several, several homes, it's very, very fortunate that nobody's hurt. Nobody's reported to be hurt. That's a good thing. Police are still looking for a third suspect in the shooting. Witnesses say a woman was spotted running from a car connected with the crime. She was said to be wearing a hooded sweatshirt and it might have fur trim. Anyone with information regarding this case is asked to call Boise Police. The Idaho Senate yesterday failed to muster enough votes to override Governor Otter's veto of a ban on instant racing betting machines. The timing of the veto leaves the law in limbo. Now there are questions about how the delay in announcing the veto could wind up nullifying it. Governor Otter had until Saturday at 5 o'clock to decide his action on the bill, but he didn't notify the legislature about his veto until yesterday morning. And that didn't sit well with lawmakers. We have a process. And if we don't follow that process on this bill, you know, two, three years from now, we'll have a different bill. And what's the process then? Governor Otter did put in place a moratorium on any new instant racing machines. He's also asking lawmakers to help appoint a special investigator to look at whether the current machines are legal. Ride-sharing service Uber is planning a celebration today after the governor gave his tacit approval to a bill allowing the service to operate statewide. Governor allowed the bill to become law by not taking any action before the deadline. The new law creates statewide standards for services like Uber and overrides any rules put down by Idaho cities and towns. The governor says Uber is an example of the free market, but he also expressed concerns about giving the car service an advantage over traditional taxi operators. Also looking for the governor's signature, a bill that would legalize cannabis oil in Idaho to treat children with severe epilepsy. The bill originally died early on in the session. The lawmakers had revived the measure last week. Supporters say the oil can reduce the frequency and severity of seizures in children with epilepsy. After 17 days of testimony and lawyers' arguments, the fate of accused Boston Marathon bomber Jokar Tsarnaev is now in the hands of the jury. Since Tsarnaev's lawyer admitted he participated in the attack, his conviction is a near certainty. After the jury reaches a verdict, the same jurors will decide if Tsarnaev should spend the rest of his life in prison or be executed for his crimes. Eight people have been arrested after a brawl and a car fire that broke out in Boise. Police arrested these four adults after officers tried to break up a fight early yesterday morning. Four teens also were arrested. One of Boise's oldest buildings now has a new home. Yesterday, a crew from Western States Movers relocated the historic Coston Cabin to make room for expansion of the Boise Historical Museum next door. They sprayed sand on the new foundation site, raked and graded it, and then gingerly moved the Civil War era structure. It was a dicey operation because the hauler had little room in which to maneuver, and the cabin itself is more fragile than it looks. Local veterinarians say parvo cases are on the rise in the Treasure Valley, especially among puppies and young dogs. Vets say the virus is always present and not uncommon, but recent increases in the number of cases has them concerned. Parvo is often deadly if left untreated. 
So it's typically young puppies who haven't had all of their vaccines yet. Usually the first signs are just lethargy. They don't feel good. They start getting droopy and kind of drooly. Dr. Margie says early detection is key. Without proper care, about 80% of dogs with parvo will die. Well, raise a glass. Today is National Beer Day, and there's some history behind it. On April 7, 1933, President Franklin Roosevelt took a step toward ending prohibition and signed a law allowing people to brew and sell beer in the U.S., but under certain circumstances. Today, beer is the most widely consumed alcoholic beverage.